Hi, it's Colin Coward. I started the volume to bring you some of the most authentic voices in sports. While you're here, make sure you hit subscribe. Thanks. Man, this this interview is is an exciting one for me. Uh, you know, obviously, in doing this, you had an opportunity to um, not only ramble on about my thoughts as I like to do, but also had an opportunity to sit down with, we've sat down with Hall of Famers, uh, future Hall of Famers, and today, um, I am honored to have another future Hall of Famer, uh, a one-time All-Star, soon to be two, um, two-time dunk champion, uh, mm -hmm. which, which produced some incredible dunks, uh, but more importantly, uh, went on after that dunk contest to show what an incredible player uh, he is and and became an all-star. And what we share in common and, and what started this relationship, which is is growing and, and it's a lifelong one, is an Olympic gold medalist. Mm -hmm. I am honored today to have my brother, Zach Levine. Zach, what up, my dog? What's up, boy? I appreciate it, man. Come man, on. This absolutely. Uh, I appreciate you coming on. This obviously means the world to me. I have an opportunity to have these conversations. We had T-Mac on last week. But just just to talk, not only basketball, but talk life um, and, and just kind of get it all out there is, is always fun for me. Uh, but, you know, from, from Renton, Washington, uh, Seattle, for, for those of y'all that, that can't put two and About two together. Outside of it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Zach, if, if I understand correctly, your, your parents are athletes, right? Yeah, my dad uh, played professional football. Um, the Portland Breakers is a USFL team back in the day. Uh, it was like the other NFL. And then went and played for the Seahawks as well for a couple of years. My mom, extremely athletic, played softball growing up. So uh, it was in my blood from the get-go. Extremely athletic. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, 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 we've seen that, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and so your dad, he played for, for the Seahawks. Is that how y'all how he ended up in Seattle, or is your dad from Seattle? No, my dad's from uh, San Bernardino, California. Grew up okay. in uh, in SoCal, and uh, ended up meeting my mom there after he uh, after he retired. So he just ended up staying in uh ended up staying in the cold, rainy city. Okay, okay. And I also read that you became a fan of Michael Jordan through the movie Space Jam. You didn't you didn't watch basketball before Space Jam's out. No, so I was I was a baseball player growing up because my dad my dad ironically actually uh -huh. got baseball too. Um, when he was when, before he went to uh, before he went to college, um, and then when I was younger, just watching Bugs Bunny and Michael Jordan together. I think as a kid, I said the best combination you can get. <laughs> <laughs> that's I, I by the way i've heard your dad is is in, out of his mind especially when it comes to your workouts i've seen some of the videos in the backyard oh, yeah. dude's crazy yeah <laughs> it was crazy. but it got me to where i where i had to go man and me and my dad are best friends um and that's why i wanted to you know i wanted to be like him growing up so i think it's uh it's something that just molded me who i am that's interesting uh and a question that i have as a father um and always trying to find that balance of how much do you push your kid and what's too much. And I've seen, I've seen uh, growing up some dads that probably push their kids way too much, and mm -hmm. and it altered the relationship. Uh, it altered the the father son relationship. And for me personally, um, my relationship with with my obviously my my two girls, uh, Olive and Cash, but. My son, my relationship is way more important than him ever becoming a basketball a star or yeah. my two girls becoming stars. My relationship with them is way more important. And so when I see that or hear that, it's kind of heartbreaking because you, to see a father lose the relationship with their son and to hear you say, my dad is my best friend and yeah. how hard he pushed you, what was the thing that kept your relationship so tight and not him pushing you away because he was pushing you so hard in basketball. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a big thing. And like you said, it's sad because being a dad and a father is number one. Um, and I want to be there one day because you have kids. But it's it's something that I had to realize growing up was, you know, how bad he wanted it and wanted it for me. I had to want it that bad as well. And he was pushing me to, you know, he was he was helping me do all the things that he didn't have. He didn't have a dad growing up. He used to tell me, he said, I wish I had somebody like me. 
that would love and care for you and tell you all the mistakes I made and, and try to guide you in the right way. So as a, as a youngster, I really realized like, you know, he's not here to hurt me. He's just trying to help and, and guide me to be the best person I can be, not just as a, as a basketball, baseball player, whatever it was, but as a man too. So, um, I, I always respect and appreciate that. That's, that's what's up. And, and so you go on from high school and, and then uh, as the Mr. Basketball in the state of Washington in 2013. How you getting all these you, stats, Dre? <laughs> I, I know a little bit. You know, I know a little bit. And and and, and Jackson Jackson is great at, at, at what he does as well. But I know a little bit about you, man. <laughs> <There> you <go. laughs> no, so so you're you're Mr. Basketball, you go on to UCLA. Um, and and having and walk me through uh your transition and going to UCLA. Because I know for me. Uh, and going to Michigan State, I, I struggled uh, a little bit that that first year. I didn't get much time. Uh, the odds were kind of against me. And I played as the year went on. I started to play more. But early mm-hmm. on, it was a struggle for me. So uh, walk me through you getting you arriving on campus and how your freshman year went. Man, I mean, coming from coming from Seattle, I mean, obviously, you're not the most highly touted or like really hot hot play to basketball. We're a little bit slept on in Northwest. So, you know, obviously I did my thing in high school and, but I wasn't a McDonald's all American. I think I was in the top like 75 for players. So I wasn't going in thinking I'm going to be a one and done guy, but um, always been a worker. And, you know, always when I step on the court was the most confident person just because the work I put in. So going out there, I had a chip on my shoulder and then being able to play against pros immediately um, on campus, you know, the runs up at mm-hmm. UCLA at, at the SAC. So playing against guys like Westbrook, Drew Holiday, uh, former guys like Josh Shipp, um, and like testing my game out, like right coming straight out of high school and seeing where I was was really good for me. And uh, just finding my way. I didn't start at I didn't start at UCLA either, but I came off the bench, had a good role, and really just started picking up uh, momentum from there. It's that's funny because I I remember watching you at UCLA. And I'm like, how are they not starting this kid? Like, this is insane <laughs> that he's not starting. Yeah, we had a really good team. And I, was, I wasn't upset about not starting because we, we were really good. I think we were like top five in the country. It was me, uh, Jordan Adams, Kyle Anderson, Norman Powell, the Ware Twins. Like, we had a really, Tony Park, we had a really good team. So um, I was always accepting of a role as long as I was able to, you know, go out there and contribute. And, and were you the highest draft pick uh, of that group? Yeah, I, I think yeah, I was I went thirteenth. I went thirteenth. Um, so it was a, uh, you know, it's the way it worked out. Hey, that's interesting because I think a lot of young guys can learn from that. You know, we all want to be starters. Uh, I think that's just the nature of what we do. But for I think there's even more so than starting. There's more power in owning your role, and so. Yeah. If you if you sit back and, and you mope about it and I think I'm better than this guy, I think I'm better than that guy, then you start to look at the draft boards, you're climbing up the draft boards, it's very easy for that to start to crumble. But I always try to tell guys, it don't, it don't matter uh, if you're starting the game. Are you in the lineup that finishes the game? Yeah, exactly. And, and that's what's important. And I remember you being in those lineups closing yeah. out games. Yeah, no, it was it was big time, and you know, like you said, accepting your role and, and talent always shows, regardless of when you're playing or where you're, or, or or your role on the team. You know, it, can you shine in those moments? And I feel like when the opportunity knocked, uh, I opened the door. Absolutely, and and so you're drafted 13th to the Minnesota Timberwolves uh, with with a young Andrew Wiggins, yeah. uh, with with a young Carl Anthony Towns. Yeah, and it didn't quite go the way everyone wanted to go. I now I personally think uh you guys were very young. And so yeah. be, being Great. that I, people don't understand um how important experience is in this league. And I felt like they never gave y'all enough time to grow together and kind of and, and they kind of moved on fast. What what did you think or feel about that? I mean like you said experience and us being extremely young, I mean we're 18, 19 years old, all together, you know, sharing the sharing the court. It's nothing is going to be perfect because you have to go through those bumps and bruises. And, we, you know, realistically, we only had two to three years to really like everybody wanted the process to happen so fast and us to be good so fast. It, it just doesn't work like that sometimes. So, um, but growing up, having those experiences, you know, those are my guys. And it was, uh, it was really fun. But it, like you, like you said, it, I don't, I don't think they let it, 
marinate enough for us to really see what could have happened. Do you think that group could have been successful if they did let y'all play, or do or do would you have just preferred for it to go the way it went? I mean, I think everything happens for a reason, but you know, it's it would have been tough. You realistically, you know, on this, it would have been tough there for everybody to stay on the team from a mm-hmm. financial standpoint because we're all you know really top level guys. But I, it, we never got to the point to find out if it would work or not. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's I, always, think, I think. Financially, it could have worked, though. Uh, I mean, you look at our team, for instance. Uh, we have Clay making the max. Obviously, Steph making the super, super, super max. Uh, but you have Clay making the max. You have Wiggs making his max at, yep. at what the max was at that time. Yep. And I'm also making my max for what I could have signed for. And so I think it could have worked financially. It could, it could have, but you guys also have won, you know, a handful of championships and we were in Minnesota in a small market. So you just, <laughs> you never, you never know, bro. I don't, I don't know. It, it would have been tough, but you know, like you said, you never know. No, and, and so you, you, you were traded to Chicago and <clears throat> Chicago hadn't really rebounded. Um, I mean, obviously you had those few years in there with Tibbs and D Rose uh, and Jimmy had a, a, a solid run there. But Chicago never truly rebounded since Michael Jordan left. And obviously, we all saw the documentary and, and how uh, Jerry Krause broke the team up. He told them that was it for Phil. Yep. It don't matter. And, and, and they never rebounded from that. And now I think everyone's finally starting to see that rebound. But walk me through uh, those years of Chicago. I found out an interesting stat when we were at the Olympics, which was Zach hadn't won three games in a row. Yeah. Uh, since college, I think it was. Uh, yeah, four games in a row since college. That was my first four-game winning streak. <laughs> Which is That's nuts. interesting. Yeah. That's it, interesting. I mean, you got to play the card to help. Um, going, going to another rebuilding team. I was coming off ACL injury when I got traded as well. So I only got to play about, I think it was less than 20 games my first year there. Um, and for anybody who knows coming off ACL, that first year isn't really you're, – you're, you're just getting your feedback. Um, mm-hmm. and then that next year is really when you become back to, you know, who you are and all that training comes in. So it was a great opportunity for me to go out there and showcase all the work I put in the off season, you know, cause I work out and I train, you know, like I said, not to, not to be a, a number two, number three guy. Like, you know, I, I work out and I want to be a superstar and that's, and that's what I work for. And I think when that opportunity came, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to be ready for it. Absolutely. And <clears throat> I know for me, when I play in Chicago, um, every time I hear the music in the starting lineup, it feels like Michael Jordan is about to run out. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's just, like, that's where we all learn that sound. Like, that's yeah. where we learn, um, you know, I, I can't really, I'm not, I'm not very good musically, so I can't really make the sound on my own. But we all know uh, the intro song of the Chicago Bulls. And like I said, for me personally, when we're playing there, Every time I hear it, I look at the tunnel like Michael Jordan's about to run out. Like and, and then, about to walk out. <laughs> absolutely. And then yeah. it's only Zach Levine run out, and I'm a little disappointed, but it's hey, all man. good. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but cool. so you 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 then you go to Chicago Bulls. Initially, knowing that the team was so bad, did you feel pressure in, in going in there uh, to live up to what the Bulls were? Or because the team was already bad, there was no pressure? I mean, me coming from a rebuilding team, I didn't know any different. And that's where, like I said, you have to play the cards you're dealt. And that's where the experience and learn how to win all comes into play. Because, you know, I had to learn for myself what it took and and, and to go into that. So it it, it was a process. Um, obviously, you go out there and try to do everything you can. But, you know, I was just looking forward to the opportunity to, um, you know, play my game and then hopefully, you know, have the, the Bulls build around me as I show progression. Now, two, year two, the year is two thousand twenty-one. Um, mm-hmm. You become a, you become an all-star yep. for the first time. You win an Olympic gold medal. Sound yep. like a damn good year to me, my man. Yeah, hey man, look, it, a lot of <laughs> a lot of work goes into that, and it just uh you know it started manifesting, and then obviously going into this year with the with the year that we're having the additions that we brought in, it's been it's been incredible. And 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 talk me through those additions. And and I want to hear about one in particular. Uh, Lonzo has been a great addition. 
Uh, Alex Caruso has been a great addition. But mm-hmm. DeMar, uh, and, you know, coming into coming into the, well, just going into those talks, there's a lot of talk about you and DeMar, y'all play the same position. Uh, yep. how, how is that going to work together once, and then DeMar does, did you, well, before we get to DeMar signing, did you have any conversations with DeMar about coming to Chicago, or was that all done with DeMar and Arturos? But they they went through their own process of going to get him. And then obviously I called DeMar myself when we were in Tokyo. Um, <laughs> I had a conversation with him and, and I was all on board because I wanted a guy like that. For all the narratives that got put out about, I think it was stupid. You know, for people that don't know basketball, don't know him as a person or a basketball player, like DeMar DeRozan is all NBA, you know, players. Like you say, future That's Hall cool. of Fame player. He's He's proven this before in the narratives that got put out because he was in San Antonio, like he's been playing great basketball <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> yes, I don't know yes. where it came from. So it, it was, it was, it was great to have a guy like that. And the way we've been able to work our chemistry on the court has been, uh, it's been like a, a hand in a glove. I, I think it's definitely been beautiful. And I, speaking of those narratives, obviously, as you know, I'm very close to Demar as well. Yeah, and we w- we would always talk. Uh, through all of that stuff going on. Uh, DeMar is, you know, he's washed up. He's kind of at the end. Uh, mid-range jump shots, he doesn't shoot threes. And, yeah. and you hear all of that talk um, really for the last two, better part of the last two years since he since he went to the Spurs. Mm-hmm. And, you know, obviously he continued to push him. And one thing that you and I both know is how he works. Yeah. Uh, and, like, works nonstop. But what was it for, if you've had these conversations, I'm not even sure if you've had the conversation, but what was it for AK and the Bulls franchise that saw DeMar and said, no, he can fit here and this will work? What was what was it that pushed them towards this direction? Because I don't think his market was that hot, especially when, when, when the Lakers went away, which goes to show, I always talk about talent evaluators and how they evaluate talent, but what was it that pushed y'all to, to get over what everyone was saying about DeMar? I haven't personally talked with AK and Mark about what made them like him, but when they came to me and said, how will this work? I was all for it. You know, we needed somebody that obviously I knew I could go to battle with every single day that's been in those positions. I haven't been to those playoffs like I, like we were talking about before. And someone who's had big time success in the playoffs. Somebody who has a calming presence in the fourth quarter and go down and make big shots and be, a, you know, me and him can be, a, you know, a one-two punch, you know, throughout the whole game. It's uh, it, it really has been like a match made in heaven. Him playing in the mid range, me being able to get to the cup and shoot three. You know, we we we've been able to do pretty much everything, and uh, just that that presence he has, man. You know, I I mean, you know him. He he has just such a confidence and a common presence that's been able to help us this year. Absolutely, and, and it seems like everyone has taken on that has taken on that demeanor. But yeah. I think when when I'm watching the Bulls, um, whether it's following along on Instagram, uh, whether it's watching the game, uh, you know, we're, we're sitting here talking about DeMar. But what I see when I'm watching the Bulls or, like I said, on Instagram, I see a totally different Zach Levine. I see a Zach Levine that is so certain of himself that yeah. um, has kind of dialed everything up. I know one of the conversations that we had this summer was, Hey man, you 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 are Zach Levine. Like you you, yeah. you are that good yeah. and embody that. And to me, um, I think as as great as Demar has been, be, w- you and I both know how it is to be have one great player on the team playing great and no one else. Yeah. And so as great as Demar has been, <clears throat> you have been equally as great. And yeah. although you've always played at the level that you're playing at. You've always uh, put up the numbers and all those things. I think it's something to say uh, for a guy that is certain of himself and carries himself that way. And it looks to me that there has been a change in you. Am I accurate? Am I off? No, 100%. Because I remember me and you having that conversation after practice. And, you know, it was... It was big for me to go out there and play on the level of guys of my talent and better than me and, and me for to accept a role on a team where, you know, I'm not going to be the number one option, the scoring option, you know, and we all had to find our roles. And I've given you credit, like 
the reason we won that gold medal, Dre, you know, KD is by far was by far the best player on the team. <laughs> but you know, without you, we wouldn't have won that. You were the overall leader, but you accepted your role and played it for what it was. I think coming into the season, I never had that type of mindset. So, by any means necessary, just try to find out a way to win. How I can you know improve my game to play both sides of the floor and then also share the floor with another dynamic you know guy as Demar has been and and still be myself. Um, I've been extremely confident, like you said. Demar has been off the charts. I know I've been right there with him. So it's uh absolutely. Uh, you know, it's been really fun and to play winning basketball and have this type of season for both of us has been it's been so fun. Uh, absolutely, and and staying in Tokyo because I. I do want to discuss that. That was such an incredible trip. Uh, yeah. Obviously, for us winning gold, but I, I may. I always tell people what what we did over there was special, and yeah. it wasn't that we won the gold medal. That was special. We built a bond amongst that team that I don't think most people truly understands. And the reality is, when we're over there. And you can speak to this too. When we're over, when we were over there, it felt like, including America, that the whole world was against us and wanted us yeah. to lose. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> like, I mean, you're looking on like, like obviously on the phone because you don't get ESPN over there, but you're looking on the phone and you have Americans dogging us. And doubting you. <laughs> like doubting yeah. us, dogging us. The world has caught up. These guys can't win, blah, blah, blah. And I felt like we had to come together yeah. the way we did in order to win. First, it was really us versus the world, especially with us being able, because of the pandemic, to not go anywhere and having to be so close-knit each and every day. Um, like you said, it definitely bonded us. And for me, being my first experience you know, over there, it was, it was incredible. No, it, it was. And, and I think uh, for me personally, I, obviously that, that was my second one. But, you know, and I appreciate uh, what you just said about me on that team, by the way. Um, one thing that I learned my first time around um, in 2016 where, man, I, I'm not sure how many minutes per game I averaged that Olympics. It was probably somewhere around six six to eight minutes a game. Yeah. <laughs> but the one thing that was – that stood out to me was since winning that 2016 gold medal, not one person asked me how many points I averaged per game. Not one person asked me how many rebounds I averaged per game. Not one person asked me how many minutes I played per game. The only thing anyone ever says was, you, you won a gold medal, didn't you? Absolutely, yep. I won a gold medal. <laughs> and so for me to then bring that mindset to this team and trying to help guys understand, hey, man, I don't, and obviously on, on this, this time around, I had a bigger a bigger impact in playing. Mm -hmm. You know, now everyone has an impact. You know, you we can speak of Keldon Johnson. You know, everyone may may f gave put up so much fuss about Keldon making the team. And I always tell people, Keldon was one of the reasons we won that. The energy that he yeah. brought uh, every, every day. Yeah. single day practice, we don't want to go to practice. Keldon in there loud, bringing energy. Happy, yeah. I don't think people truly understand that. And and that was me. Like, I was Keldon for four years or, man, six years ago. Six Wait, years I ago, <laughs> I was Keldon. And so I understood that. And like I said, I played a, a bigger role now. But for instance, um, it came down to, like, who's going to start, me or Bam? I'm telling Coach Pop, like, I don't care. Like, start yeah. Bam. Who, who cares? That don't matter to me. And I don't think people truly realize how important – a guy settling to settling into his role on on that on that US team is in order to yep. win that gold. No, it was it was big time and and what you said earlier, winning trumps everything. Absolutely. Nobody asked you how many minutes you play, you won the gold medal. Winning trumps everything and everybody was happy with the role that they had and that we got to celebrate with the gold medal. It it was that, that I think that's what the main thing that I brought back like you said to even to the NBA this year, me having my my old role back with my team. Winning trumps everything, and that's what we have to go out there and do. No doubt. And as soon as we got back from Tokyo, which we all flew back together, um, yeah. news comes out maybe a week, a, a week, week and a half later uh, that that you had left your agent and signed with Rich Paul and Clutch Sports. And yeah. I thought that was a very big deal because the reality is that 
you were with Bill Duffy and Nimer. Yeah. And it's not that they were doing a bad job or, you know, I I know for me personally, I can only speak on my own experience. Uh, When I signed with Clutch Sports, it wasn't that my previous EJ, uh, my previous agent, BJ Armstrong, was doing a bad job. I thought he was doing a a good job and, and we had a we had a close relationship. I just thought for me and where I was in my life and the things that I wanted to do that clutch moving forward was the best fit for me. It didn't necessarily make BJ bad. It didn't make Wasserman bad. Yeah. I just felt that that was the best decision for me. What what was it for you that made you want to want to make that switch? It, it like you just said, Bill and Nima did. I love those guys to death. They helped me grow as a person and help me grow as a man into this league. You know, I loved him. I still talk to him all the time, but you know, sometimes you have to go off and do something that's right for you at the right time. And I think me at this stage of my career, clutch lined up with everything that I was going, moving forward to, and even into the future. And, um, you know, I really appreciate what they did, but, you know, I really appreciate what Rich and clutch is doing for me now. And then moving forward, because that's the, that's the path I'm on. Absolutely. Um, and like I said, I, I saw that you made that move. I thought it was a great move. And like you said, and just who you are becoming. And, you know, yeah. now this summer, you're having a great season. You're about to be an all-star. Uh, your team is right there tied for first place in, in the Eastern Conference. Uh, you know, so obviously looking, albeit that y'all get healthy because y'all have been bitten by the injury. <laughs> been a little bug. banged up lately, man. <laughs> been a little banged up lately. Yeah, y'all been bitten by the injury bug like we have. So albeit that 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 y'all get healthy, now you're going into uh, your first playoffs and, and you're able to compete for yeah. for what hopes to be a championship. But and and speaking of y'all getting healthy, it looked like y'all have found a hidden gem. And, and being hurt and and Ayu, yeah. Uh, what what what's your feeling on him? What does he bring to the table that that you like or love? He he's a dog. You know he was he has a chip on his shoulder. Was a second round pick. Was you know one of the players of the year in college. Kid really knows how to play. Does whatever is asked. Will play defense. Will go out there and score a game if he has to. Play the point guard. I mean he he has a great feel for the game. And um, you know we appreciate him. And with us being out gave him an opportunity to go out there and start getting more comfortable and doing everything he has. And now with us being back, me and DeMar even says, man, keep playing this way because we're going mm-hmm. we're going to need it. And, um, absolutely, you know, I think I think that's how sometimes when opportunity happens, you go out there and start becoming who you who you're meant to be. Absolutely. And I, I went on uh, J.J. Reddick's podcast that'll that'll drop this week. And, and one thing uh, that we discussed was the importance of team and the importance of culture within a team. And the reason I am bringing that up is standing along the lines of Ayu. Um, if you and DeMar aren't, aren't going about things the way y'all are going about things, being true professionals, and, and Vooch as well, because Vooch, yeah. Vooch is an ultimate pro, and Caruso, and Lonzo, obviously. But, you know, whenever you're speaking of a team, you're always going to talk about the two top dogs. That's just how it goes. Yeah. But... Do you feel that there, the importance of culture and winning has helped move him along? Because as a young player, you also went to a Minnesota team that didn't have culture. And it's yeah. kind of just guys out there doing what they do. do you, can you see the difference or the importance of culture and winning in him as opposed to what you were giving your, your rookie year? A hundred percent, because you're coming into a totally different environment. Um, with experience, and I can include myself being a you know eight year pro now. You know, seeing guys like me in the gym early, guys like Demar staying afterwards, getting their getting their work in, and then going getting treatment. Guys like Alex Caruso, who's won a championship, speaking during film sessions and walkthroughs. Um, Lonzo Ball sacrificing himself and, and pointing out defensive coverages. Like I didn't have that. You know, like you mm-hmm. said, it was just a bu- it, it was just rolling the ball out and, and guys just playing. So. I O even coming from a winning a winning uh, program in Illinois. Now coming into this, is this is a totally different thing that I have, but it's helped him push along his game. At least I feel like to where this is a normal thing, and this is how it's supposed to be ran. Absolutely, and I wanna I wanna backtrack a little bit and talk again about Zach pre star Zach Levine 
And and what I want to talk about is actually an event uh, that I attended with a, with a bright ass yellow jacket on. Uh, and yeah. That was the dunk contest. <laughs> I'm not sure I would ever wear that. Well, I actually I didn't believe I would ever wear that jacket again. I I actually gave the jacket to Mr. Fab because I'm like I I'll never wear this again. I was thinking about that jacket a couple nights ago. Like, man, I should have kept that jacket. I'll throw that on some all black nowadays and rock out. <laughs> but but I personally thought that was, and I've watched a ton of dunk contests. I'm 31. I've probably been watching the dunk contest since I was four or five years old. Um, I personally thought that was one of the best dunk contests I've ever seen. And it was pretty much what it came down to was you and Aaron Gordon. If an, if, and if I'm not mistaken, DeMar was in that dunk contest. No, DeMar, DeMar what he was going to be. I remember talking okay. to him because we, we played uh, – we played Toronto like three days before the All Star break, and he said, "Man, I was going to be because it was in Toronto." Um, yeah, so I said, bro, I was about to be in the All Star uh, the the dunk contest until you put your name in there. <laughs> so, okay. yeah. And I remember correctly, he's like, "Man, I'm not about to jump with them young." Ones. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, but, man, but like I said, uh, did you do you feel like that was one of the best dunk contests ever? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you can't you can't base any things on error and uh, like impact like what Dominique and Michael had or like Vince's dunk contest, but you have to put that up there to be one of the best dunk contests just on the pure skill, athleticism in the fifties that we were doing, and um, it it was a toss up, and it just came down to who had the best dunk at the end of the overtime, and uh, I tried to go between the legs and the free throw line. That was the first time I tried that, and I made it. So <laughs> that's the first time you ever tried that. That was the first time I ever tried it. First time and only time. Happy, you know, so. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting. That's yeah. interesting. And obviously that was up against Aaron Gordon, um, who went on to give himself the nickname Mr. 50. What 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 do you think or make of that? I mean, a, I mean, AG, look, he's had a bunch of times where he could have won a dunk contest. Absolutely. And, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's unfortunate because it, not everybody can win. And I mean, mm-hmm. at the end of it, even said like, hey, man, look, we should both be sharing this because just for the culture and for what we did for this, you know, event, you know, it was big time. But, uh, you know, AG definitely is going to be cemented in dunk contest history, even if he didn't win it. No, I, I agree 100 percent. I, I actually thought the same thing. Like, man, just stop this now. Let them both win. Yeah. And but, we go on about our night because Toronto was definitely a great time. But I, um. What do you can you ever see yourself um participating in a dunk contest again or are those days behind you? Oh, it's over. Yeah, it's over. <laughs> it's, 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 it's done. I try I can I can still get up, you know that, but it's not uh it's not uh it's not the forefront of my mind anymore. And uh, you know, now with me logging more and more minutes, you know, I was playing I was only playing like twenty eight minutes a game then. So <laughs> I can go out there and jump all the time. So no, uh, I'm saving my dunks for the, you know, if you try to come over and set a charge or something like that. Uh, that's the thing, though. I'm never coming over and try to set the charge. I think you didn't, you didn't try it before I blocked it. Yeah, you and blocked it. And then you try, and I got out the way. I ain't yeah. no fool. <laughs> <laughs> what you're not dealing with here is a fool. I'm not crazy. If I, listen, I keep trying to tell Miles Bridges, who infamously went out and said publicly that the one guy he wants to dunk on is me. Yeah. Um, I try to tell Miles all the time. You're not going to dunk on me. And the reason you're not going to dunk on me is because I'm only going to jump if, if you know I know fight. I have the advantage. Yeah. And if I if there is even an inkling of not having the advantage, and when I say advantage, I don't mean advantage to, to block the shot. Although foul, you want to block the, the shot. Hell <laughs> I need to be in a position where I can foul you <laughs> to where you can't make that shot. And I try to tell Miles this all the time, like Miles. I'm only going to block your shot, foul you, or move out the way. You're, those won't equal out to you dunking on me. It's just yeah. not going to happen. So you, you may want to take that word of advice too. But Prime <laughs> MJ, Kobe, VC, and you, what, what's Ooh. happening in that dunk contest? Wow. See, a lot of people don't put, put, put Kobe in there. Kobe was hey one now. of dunker, man. Hey, now. <laughs> That's how I first learned about Kobe was in yeah. the dunk contest with the fro yeah. between the legs, like, Back then, between the legs wasn't common. You yeah, know, you now, got, now I think, simple. yeah, exactly. Like Isaiah Ryder had did it, uh, but there, there was, it wasn't a common, it wasn't a common dunk, and Kobe was doing all that. But who, who you, who, what, what's happening in that dunk contest? Um, 
I mean, MJ is going to get the biggest fan reaction. He can argue. <laughs> um, Vince, Vince is going to come with like the most, I would say, creative. Because he, yeah. it's going to be a toss up, man. I'll never put myself against anybody. I think it'll be me and Vince in the final, you know, but I, I, I think Vince might. I think Vince might take me because Vince. I I always go against the guys that you know came before me, and and Vince Vince came with some stuff. It'll be me or Vince. It just depends on who makes the first dunk. That's what I will say. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Zach Levine just um, eliminated Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. Let that marinate <laughs> for a minute. <laughs> no, that's, that's the, it's it, a dunk contest. <laughs> <laughs> let that marinate. Uh, it's it's funny because last week, as I said, we had we had T Mac on, and I asked T Mac. I said, T Mac, um, back in those Raptor days, you know how you 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 jumping guys do after practice, y'all doing all the dunks while I go sit down and watch and talk my jump. Um, but I was asking him. I said, you or Vince back in those days dunking, and with with like he didn't even blink. Vince Carter by far, like. Not even close. And so it's interesting that that's who you went with as well. Because I think, I don't think people realize, number one, how athletic Vince was. But number two, how good of a player Vince was. It, 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 how good of a dunker almost trumped how good of a player he was. Like, the dude's a straight-up Hall of Famer, 26,000 points, average, you know, what, 28, 29, 30 points per game a couple of times. Like, that's... You don't do that by dunking. <laughs> you know, you're off the Absolutely. chart. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. No, I think – I always tell people, I think Vince had an incredible career, and I think he is one of the most talented players that has ever stepped foot in the NBA. So it's it's great uh, to see you give him his flowers because that, that doesn't happen often. And like I said, when you're talking any category that includes Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant and, you know, and – the two other guys are the ones that walk out of that conversation because I too believe that you would have been up there. I, you, you put on one of the greatest dunk contest performances that we've ever seen, and not once, but twice. And so, I, I, two times, right? You want it was funny about you. Remember, how you just said T Mac and Vince would dunk after practice. You want to know who beat me in a dunk contest that you wouldn't think of? Wicks. Exactly. <laughs> Listen, man, I have this picture on my phone. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> I have this picture on my phone of Wiggs jumping, and he he literally jumped for a rebound. And hey, like his this. neck is above the square. Yeah. The top of the square. Like, he I just, couldn't believe point, it. He never wanted to do it. He would just casually, like, after practice, we would do, he would just casually do some stuff I've never seen before. I'd be like, wow. And that's going to, you know, I'm, you know, <laughs> I did what I did in dunk contest. It was crazy. Well, let's see. We got Wiggs who are going to make the All-Star game this year, and yep. we all need to be pushing for Wiggs to also get in the dunk contest. <laughs> I don't know if he's going to do that. No, <laughs> At no chance he's doing that. <laughs> <At> no <chance. laughs> hey, but but before I let you before I let you get out of here, uh, I don't want to take up much more of your time. I am very appreciative of you coming on. Uh, the last thing I want to discuss, you're, you are a free agent uh, coming yep. up this summer. Um, how are you approaching free agency? Are you excited about it? Um, I know for me, I, I never wanted to hit free agency. Like I, I signed my extension. Um, bef I hit free agency once, but I was a restricted free agent, which was after my third yeah. year. And I had to hit it that time because that second year I didn't play. So I needed yeah. that third year to yeah. earn my money. Uh, and then obviously my current contract, I signed the extension. So I never wanted to hit free agency, but how are you approaching this? Are you excited about it? Uh, are you not worried about it at all right now and just playing? I think that's a little cliche because we all think about things, especially when talking about the type of money that you're going to be up for. Yeah, no, obviously I'm excited for it. Now we're, we're focused on the year and everything like that. And my whole focus is on winning, but I mean, I'm excited. I've never been a free agent. You know, last time I was, I was a restricted free agent. And I had to sign an offer sheet, you know, mm -hmm. so not a lot of people go through that. Um, so I'm excited about it. And, uh, you know, obviously I got, you know, a great support system with Rich and Clutch that's going to, you know, take care of me and my business on that end. But, 
you know, I'm looking forward to it. And, uh, you know, because it's a new experience. You know, not, not a lot of people get to go through it and have a choice. So I'm excited. And Hunter as well. Yes, and my wife as well. <laughs> <laughs> Zach, no, I, my brother. I, I, yeah, go no, ahead, I, go I, ahead, go ahead. No, yeah, no, we're 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 extremely excited. Obviously, like what we built in Chicago and what we're going through this year, you know, I'm extremely happy and I know that, you know, for right now this is my home, but you know, it's uh, you know, I'm excited because it's a new experience. I must say, I, I am excited that you're going through this with Rich. And the reason I am excited is because I know uh the way Rich goes about his contract negotiations. And um, I've now been, I've had two agents before Rich, so I've gone through contract negotiations with now three agents, Rich being one of them. Yeah. And he goes about it in a, in a way totally different than I had seen before. And I think that one of the things that I was most impressed about was the way my contract was drawn up. Because mm -hmm. I think so many guys get caught up in, how much money is it? What's the dollar amount? And the reality is there are a lot of little nuances in contracts that if you don't understand, you can get screwed over, you know. Yeah. And and Rich is actually one one the one who taught me all of those things. I mean, I'm talking about going in, I'm in year seven or eight of my career and and seven and didn't know those things that he's taught me, whether it was the payment schedule, um, Love of the game, you know, all of these different things that yep. he included in my contract that really made my contract worth more than the actual dollar amount. Which and, is crazy that you didn't know about that until your eighth year. So I think that's what I'm looking forward to, Rich, because like you said, he he's really a savant about it, you know, mm -hmm. and it's just cool. No, absolutely. So I am excited to see you uh, go through your process, brother. But even more importantly, I am as excited and watching you and Damar uh, tear apart the Eastern Conference, and I and I think I think it only goes up from here. Like this is year one that we're seeing it. Uh, yeah. I think I think it only goes up here from you, from here for you guys. And you know, I was talking to Demar, and, and you know, and just looking at y'all roster, like that's going to continue to improve, and yeah. and you guys are going to continue to improve as your two workers. So I'm extremely excited about it, brother. Good luck the rest of the way. Good luck with getting y'all guys back healthy. I'm looking forward to getting back healthy and getting out there too, but I can't thank you enough for coming on, my brother. I appreciate it, man. You know I'll talk to you anytime. In the, in the off season, we want to enjoy a nice glass of wine together, dog. We we definitely going to do that. Oh, by the way, I see you got a, you got a New Balance hoodie on. What's that about? Uh, you know, I'm a little bit of a free agent right now too, so I'm just, you know, I'm messing around with all these different brands and, uh, you know, enjoying my time there too. I'm a free agent everywhere right now. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I love to see it. Well, it, it works. It goes hand in hand, my brother. But good luck the rest of the way, bro. I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you, dog. Stay safe. Get healthy, man. Yes, sir. Thank you.